Welcome everybody. So this is the video for all of our crew that has been asking, how do I play Neon by John Mayer? And so uh, this is the video where we're gonna learn how to sing and play it. Um, first disclaimer, if you are a guitar aficionado and you are a mad fan of John Mayer, please turn off because I do not do the crab claw method nor will I teach you how to do it. I don't know how to do it. I don't really care about learning it. Um, but if you are someone who is like, hey, I want to sing and play this and I want to learn how to do the improvisation over this. Um, this is for you. Uh, if you guys like what I do, like there's been a bunch of people who have loved the jam. So basically we're going to be jumping in. Um, two core things that we're going to be focusing on is getting the groove, uh, getting your groove down and then learning how to sing and play it. So it'll be like, when the gets dark enough to see the cutters up. The city lights, a trail of ruby red and dark white. So we're doing stuff like that. Um, the other thing we're going to be focusing on is uh, a big question, I guess, like how do you solo over it? Because typically um, there's two things that happen with most people who approach this song. They, um, they're usually guitar players and uh, they wish they could sing it. Um, or their singers that love singing the song and wish they could play the guitar part. So this is kind of like marrying the two uh, groups that definitely struggle when it comes to like connecting with this song and, and getting the most out of it. Because uh, the guitar part, I mean, I love the guitar part. It's cool. But the guitar part's not the song. The song is like all of the elements. It's like the singing, it's the melody that he gets, the rich harmonies that he's pulling out. Because he's playing a really simple chord progression. It's like a, it's like a one and then a... It's like a really, really simple. He's just walking up the the diatonic scale in the in the C minor. So it's like he's not doing anything crazy, um, but the harmonies he's pulling out are just oh, legendary. So you, you want to jump in and you want to do all of it. So um, we're going to be doing connecting the chords and the voice. Um, so getting the guitar and the, and the vocals to work together. And then the other thing is um, is learning how to improvise over it. So. So like typically he will do whenever he performs live, he will do uh, a, an extended intro and then after his bridge section, the he'll do like some jam. So I, I don't, haven't learned any of his um, any of his stuff note for note, but I just worked on like techniques that he did. And then I learned to reverse engineer his improvisation so that I could be creative for myself. So I'll show you guys how to do that one as well. Now, the most important thing, if if the macro approach, like this is the, the most important thing right now, do not come into this song. If your macro approach is to sing and play the song, do not come into the song to be like, I need to learn how to play it on guitar. Absolutely, will you will crash and burn you will fail miserably um it will make it really 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 hard i did it that way and i regret every bit of it but that was just because i didn't have anyone showing me the right way to do it um i went in i learned how to play it on the guitar um i tried to get the techniques down i tried to get the groove going and then i tried to sing over the top of it and it just didn't work um it took a long time and then once i finally figured out the right way to groove into it um it became a lot easier and then you just, from then you just hone it. And if you are someone who gets the, once you hit the point of listenable and you've got the groove down and you're really confident in it, then start picking up like, you know, the more niche things of John Mayer's technique, like learn the crab claw method if you want to do it and then like really refine your playing. You could totally do it that way. Um, me personally, I just learn more songs and have heaps more fun. So what we're going to do is start with the most important thing, which is learning how to connect your rhythm with the vocal rhythm. So anytime you're approaching a singing a song, there's three elements to a vocal. There's the rhythm of the vocal, there is the melody of the vocal, and then there's the lyrics. Now, typically I go in the order of rhythm first, which is in my opinion, the most important. Rhythm of the vocal is paramount to establishing feel in a song. Feel in the vocal, connecting with the music is all in the rhythm of the vocal. Then the next part is going to be the melody. Uh, where you can stack, and once you stack the melody on top of that rhythm, it's like very listenable. Like you can bomb on every lyric and it will still sound really nice. Um, and then obviously getting the lyrics correct. So 
That is, in my opinion, most important thing. If I'm ever performing this song, the only thing I care about, I will make a million mistakes on the guitar. I don't care. It is all about the vocal. So when you're practicing this, you want to learn how to connect the vocal immediately to your right hand. And I don't care about your left hand. Your left hand is is just whatever. It It's kind of like steering the boat, but if your boat doesn't have a motor, you're kind of screwed. So you're going to be going for the rhythm, which John Mayer has. He's got a really great video on TikTok of him. He's like, hey, if you want to play my song, you just got to go like this. And that really is neon. He wasn't kidding. If you can get that groove, when sky blue gets dark enough to see the colors of the city lights. That's what you want to do. At the beginning of learning how to sing and play this song, that is your very, very first step. Right now I have the tabs up from Ultimate Guitar because these tabs are really good. Um, they've got all the correct stuff. So if you've never played the song before, you'll be dropping your E, your low E string, um, the sixth string on the guitar. You're dropping it down to a C. So bring it down. It is very, very fun tuning. Um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to get that right hand going. And with that right hand going, you're going to start focusing on getting the vocal in time. So while always keeping this groove. When sky blue gets dark enough to see the colors of the city lights. Trail of ruby red and diamond white. It's a like a sunrise. So hard to just talk it because I'm singing it all the time. But that is the first step. So you're going to jump in. You're going to get the right hand gro grooving and doing that. Like knee on, knee on. Knee on, knee on. As simple as that. It, it doesn't seem like it's a big deal. But that is the thing that you really need to, to lock into. If you can lock into the vocal rhythm in your right hand being very tight, like besties, you know, like that that meme with like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Apollo Creed, and they're like, Whoa, and they grab each other. That's what this is. I was like, Whoa, whatever they do. That's what you need your vocal rhythm and your right hand to become like. Just brothers, ready to rock and roll, or sisters, whatever you prefer. When sky blue gets dark enough to see the colors of the city lights. Um, and obviously I'm singing the lyrics, but you can just go ba 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 Because you can hear there's a nuances to the to the vocal rhythm that you really need to accent. You can't just go when sky blue gets dark enough. When sky blue gets dark enough. To see the colors of the city lights. You know, it just already just sounds wrong. Um, the rhythm is the thing that's going to throw other people off when they listen. Usually um, people are always like centric on like harmony. They're centric on, uh, on melody and lyric. But the truth is it's rhythm. If you play the wrong rhythm, people will pull like they will they will fucking know right away. They will know immediately if you're not playing the right rhythm. So can't stress enough. You've got to get the rhythm down. So the first step is you're going to connect the vocal rhythm with the strumming. And that goes throughout the whole song. So you can start at the beginning. You can just keep going through and just keep practicing. Now, once you've got the vocal rhythm down, from that point forward, it's up to you. You've got choices at this point. You can be like, do I want to practice the guitar part? Do I want to practice the vocal melody? Do I want to practice the lyrics? Now, anytime you step outside of this rhythm zone, anytime you step out of this rhythm zone, be very de deliberate in the practice that you're going to do. If you're going to practice vocal melody, don't grab your guitar. Just sit there, listen to the recording, and practice singing to the vocal rhythm. So, when da 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 Practice the melody by letting do's or bars or whatever you want. And and record yourself if you, like this is the true like next level, record yourself singing the melody um, while it's playing in the background of um, of John Mayer singing it. 
And so you can match because some people's ears aren't going to be that good. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to train your ear to slowly get better and better at it. And once it gets really good at picking out whether you're singing incorrectly or not, you'll be able to monitor yourself in real time whether you got it right or not. So if you're going to practice the vocal melody, drop the guitar and listen to the vocal melody and um, and really hone in on the vocal melody. And then once you really get comfortable, like I'm getting quite confident with this vocal melody, then you grab your guitar again. And now you don't go do crazy things. You just do the same thing you did before. That's it. You're going to practice doing that. It is so paramount how important that is. Do not step into the zone of like, all right, I'm going to learn the vocal melody as I'm like strumming. No, jump in, learn that thing, then extract it and then put it into what you already know. Same thing with lyrics. Jump in, memorize the lyrics with the melody and then extract it, come back in. When sky blue gets dark enough. And that's it. That At that point, if you were to get up and go and play, when sky blue gets dark enough to see the colors of the city lights, a trail of ruby red and diamond white, it's a like a sunrise. She comes and goes and comes and goes like no one can. You know, that is great. Like anyone who is listening, like, I mean, if I heard someone do that, I wouldn't be mad at them. I'd be like, where's the guitar part? <laughs> I, I'd just be like, where's the guitar part? But I like the singing and it sounds in time. So I wouldn't be uncomfortable. So that is truly the most important part of it. And, and it's it's super underrated. Everyone's always like, I got to get the, you know, the full the full shebang down no that's not it the song is the vocal the vocal uh, is i like everyone loves the guitar part because it's a really cool guitar part um but it really is a gimmick it's a trick it's just like a you know fun rhythm that john may loves to do and he even says it's a gimmick he literally says at the start of his show he's like oh this is my party trick it's like um and the technique came like the reason why he created the song was a technique that he um he developed after he couldn't do Tomo Fujita's party trick. Tomo Fujita has like the slapping technique that he does. And um, and that was where Neon came from. It was just like an iteration of that slapping te technique that John Mayer couldn't do. So he was like, ooh, I wonder I could do my own thing. Um, so just realize that the guitar thing is like a fun trick. As soon as you've played one round of it, people want to hear the song. They don't want to hear you doing the guitar thing. Um, and you can look at all the countless videos of people doing guitar covers of it. It's like really boring. Um, once you get past like the first like body, like, well, where's the song? Like you're just playing a guitar part. It's boring. So you want to really, um, really, 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 really jump into that, respecting that vocal rhythm, respecting the vocal and like super laser focused on it. Um, I know it's not the right, like it's not what you would really, really want, especially if a guitar is hearing this. I'm saying this from the perspective of the guitarist because I love the song and um, every time I I would be like, I've got to get the guitar part. It's got to sound great. And it's like, no, it really doesn't have to sound great. It just has to sound in time. Um, you can bomb on all the notes, just keep it in time and that's all that matters. Now, that is all that truly matters for the vocal. You go through the entire song. Um, I'm not going to go through every word for word with you guys. It's just a waste of my time, a um, waste of your time. What you need to do is you're going to go, as you can handle, you go through the song. You take tackle the verse, you tackle the pre-chorus, you tackle the chorus. Really get the vocal rhythm down, keep it in time with your right hand. And that is your number one objective. Very first stage of Neon is doing that. Now, once you are super comfortable with the vocal rhythm and doing all that, now you can start messing around with, all right, I'm going to start adding these chords. Now, I have the ultimate guitar tab up here on the screen. Um, this is plenty fine. You you really don't need much more than this. Now, what you're going to do when you go to approach playing this is you're going to separate the practice into two things. You're going to either practice playing the chords or you're going to practice playing the rhythm. Um, when you go to practice playing the rhythm after learning the chords, it's just you 
seeing how close you can get the chords to fit into the rhythm. It's not about, all right, which is what people do. But what you want to do here is you want to get, that's the first practice. That's the first chord. We see it there. It's got the eight and the 10 on the B and G string. And what I would do, so say for instance, it was these, these two notes was the first one I had to get. I'd be like. So you see, I'm just, just getting that. Not disrespecting the rhythm. And that is how you're gonna get that groove going with the chord. Now, I would practice this chord then. And then the next chord we're moving over, it's a, uh, you know, uh, barring three pretty much. And then you got the fourth fret. So I would practice that shape. So I go. Which is open on the six on the E string, and then we got the three bar, and then the four on the B string, and just there. It's not. That's not how it works. It's just a chord shape, chord shape. It's like he was kumbayaing, but he's just allowing his right hand to articulate the finger picking. That's all he's doing. There's nothing crazy here. There's no complicated like. It's just. You're just keeping that groove. So if I've got these two chords, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna practice this shape, and then I'm practice this shape, and then I'm gonna sit down and go. And you can just like crash and burn as much as you can. That is all you're doing. This is kind of fun, like a little exercise for me to mess around with the crab claw. <laughs> but then you're going from there, and then you go into there, and then you get the next chord, and then you get this chord, and then this chord. So they're all there on the tab, um, and what you're gonna do is you're just gonna slowly, slowly get comfortable with the chord shape. And you wanna move all together. That's what you're practicing. Chord shape, chord shape, chord shape, chord shape, chord shape. So that is Really, you're doing chord practice there, and then all you're going to do is whatever comes out when it comes to the is what's going to come out. And I trust me, if you do it this way, seriously, if you do it this way, through time you're going to get more and more accurate. You know, you're just going to be refining, refining how you're hitting these notes. So maybe if I can YOLO this crab claw. So useless at it. <laughs> Now there's only one thing that's happening here, which is I, I'm kind of riffing on it. Which is the only tricky thing he does in this little riff. So if you want to practice that slowly, um, you can kind of try and do it. Just get used to trying to... And that's setting it up. You're just getting that. You're playing that chord shape using your pinky and then setting up. So you play the chord. And that 
I'll get you that intro. Now, every other part of the song, you're gonna follow the exact same system. Um, the rest of the song is a lot easier uh, when it, because at the beginning, it's kind of like you're just breaking into that rhythm, breaking into playing chords with this never ending thing. That's as far as we're going to get with the guitar part, like especially in this in this tutorial. Um, you don't the the problem is there's so much information out there for when it comes to playing the guitar part. You can just go and watch those videos. They're really good videos too. Um, I've seen heaps of like young kids jumping out, like absolutely slaying the guitar part. Like especially the way the light is cover is the one that everyone wants to nail. Um, and there's heaps of people that are absolutely slaying on it. So once you get really comfortable with this. When sky blue gets dark enough. If you've got that down, there's heaps of really great resources that you can go to. You can either just use the ultimate guitar tab that we have here to work through each section. And what you're gonna be doing with the practice is you wanna listen to a version of the track that you like, um, that you wanna copy, and then that's, you're just listening to it and then you're trying to emulate it. Listening to it, trying to emulate it. But as long as it's coming from a place of playing it in time, that's the only thing I care about. You get it in time, you get the vocal rhythm in time with your right hand, and then let everything else, depending on your skill level as a guitarist, will happen later. I have seen beginners, I kid you not, not beginners, but more like intermediate, absolutely level up this way. Just completely level up their playing because they're focusing on the right thing that's the most important thing. And that's the thing that some people might be able to play the notes right. Like I was a guy who would play the notes right essentially, and then they would, it would just wouldn't feel right, you know? And as soon as I married the feel with the vocal rhythm, it was just like absolutely leveled up the song for me. Um, so that is what I would highly recommend for you guys when it comes to that. Now, he has a little uh, section that he has in every time that he plays a song. So he's gonna do like a change. which I do believe is in this tab. Please tell me it's in this tab. Otherwise I'm gonna be slightly annoyed about it. He has it. Yep, part eight, so five. So part five, they have it. Um, now that is your signal. You can either. Whatever you decide to do over the top of that, you can do. Uh, sometimes he sings over it, sometimes he doesn't sing over it. On the way the light is, he does this really cool falsetto thing, which is awesome. Um, you guys can do whatever you want. Um, it's main thing is just getting this slight feel change. He's about to swap you back into this solo section. Now, when it comes to soloing over neon, uh, you need to remember two things. Uh, you're playing a minor pentatonic, it's gonna be C minor pentatonic, so starting, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll break it down from the high E string. So from the high E string, you'll be going uh, 11, 8, 11, 8, 10, 8, 10, 8, 10, 8, 10, 8. And then the sixth string is like, I don't want you to be thinking about that one. Don't think about the low E. So high E, 11, 8, 11, 8, 10, 8, 10, 8, 10, 8. And now the, the low string is kind of like, you've got, uh, you've got a uh, open, Three, five, seven, ten, twelve. Those are the notes that you have. And the other cool thing that you want to do, I oh, will integrate the lower notes in a sec, but um, basically when you're jumping in, I like to have like a central place that I'm, I'm sitting at. So every time you will hear him play it, um, he usually is like, okay, I'm going to, he has to create home. So he needs to set you up in a place where you are safe. And then when he deviates, he can deviate where he wants to deviate, but he can always resolve. So that's how he keeps you in a loop of like a really long solo. Um, he can either make it short, he can make it long. It's whatever he feels in the moment. So you need to replicate the way that he approaches his improvisation. 
So if I'm going to jump into that one. So you can see how I'm using that little section there. So what I'm doing with the with the notes wise, it's a uh, zero on the low E string, and then we got uh, six on the A string, and then seven on the D string. So just like that. Um, and what that creates is a minus six. So uh, so he's basically riffing on what we call the Dorian mode, which is not. Um, I don't expect a lot of you guys to know what that is. But essentially, you're just playing your minor pentatonic. And then there's a note called the natural six, which exists in Dorian, which is that note there. And it has like this really, really cool tone. So it creates like this like mystique around it. So especially like, because if you set it up, Very, very cool. Very, very, very cool sound. So essentially that's how you're gonna be approaching it. You're gonna be jumping in. I like to jump in and this is my zone. I'm in there. Oh. And she she goes and so you can just immediately come back um to the pre-chorus whenever you want and that will lead you into the last chorus but that is that zone you can go for ages you can do whatever you want from there so the first setup is there and then i like to jump in either over here you see how i'm using that that natural note i'm just moving an octave up and that's getting me my sound there And then um, obviously there's the lick that he does in where the light um, in the uh, live live in LA where the light is um, version that he does. Um, he does like a big uh, bass run. You can check that out. Um, there's a bunch of people on YouTube who do it. Uh, but basically, if you're trying to integrate the bass note, this is the only other thing that you're missing. Um, you're going to want to think about how the tuning works in relationship to the key. So basically. Wherever the note is, your octave is down two strings and then two frets down. Not only be like that, but now it's over here. So you got that one obviously can't get. There's your, your notes. So if you know where your octave is for the bass note, you can be kind of clever with it. So those are kind of like the two areas of the improvisation that I would have fun with, um, groove out, have heaps of fun. Um, but essentially that's really it. Like, so when it comes to neon, uh, improvising over it is just sitting in the C minor pentatonic. I'm not going into like heavy, like improvising techniques. I don't know what level you're at watching this. You could be advanced, you could be intermediate, you could be beginner. Um, we do have a beginner improvisation course was well, for everyone improvisation course on um in my in our free online school so you can jump in on those courses if you want to learn but uh give me your feedback if you like this if this was helpful um this is mainly just because i get the question all the time how can i play neon how to play neon how to play neon 
and I really want you guys to jump into it, but um, this is how I would approach it. It's a mindset. Like you want to be have a certain mindset when it comes to playing the song. You don't want to be going in and being like, all right, this is the guitar part. This is the vocal. Like you want to just be like, okay, this is the vocal rhythm. This is the rhythm. Nail it and get it down. And then you start adding parts of the guitar part and then you start adding parts of the melody and the lyrics and it will just be like, we will watch it come together. I've already been watching one of my, uh, one of our students and a person in our community, he's started working on it already and um, just it, like trying to keep him on track to be like, this is the, please focus on this. Um, and, and as soon as he like starts nailing that, oh, it's just like, it, it's really coming together quite nicely. Um, so yeah, I can't wait to see, uh, many, many other people come up and do this. Uh, and please, yeah, I would love to see you guys posting in the school. You guys can post videos in the school of you playing it and, uh, people can give you feedback and cheer you on and it'd be really, really awesome. So thank you so much for your time. And hopefully, uh, that helps you guys out. Oh, one little Easter egg too. If you really, really want to, um, when you end the song, she burns you can add Justin Bieber sorry is it too late now to say sorry cause I'm missing more than just your body add that in it's pretty cool um, it's a fun little thing at the end of the song that I sometimes do I picked it up from Jesse Gold I think it's Jesse Gold uh, R&B singer so good he's like one of the best singers I've heard in a while he's so cool so cool alright uh Love you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, hopefully this helps you uh, in achieving your neon by John Mayer goals. Let's go, everyone.